How can you get your bile to flow again? In this video, we will discuss simple methods on how you can change the thickness and composition of your bile. This video will be useful for those who already have some gallstones and for people with just biliary dyskinesia or poor bile flow. The thickness of bile and bile stones is mainly provoked by cholesterol, which is a bile component. Only 20% of it we intake with food. The rest is made by our liver from everything, including sugars, carbohydrates, fats, proteins, and even alcohol, but mainly glucose. Now let's imagine the person that have a poor bile outflow and maybe gallstones. What the eating behavior will be typical for him? I'll give you three very different examples. The first one, a person who has never eaten fatty food, avoids meat and eats mostly cereal, bread and occasionally sweets. This person may suffer from high cholesterol and even may have gallstones. The second person eats fast food, sausages, processed fatty meat and other meat delicacies. And the third variant, a person who eats more or less healthy foods, eats vegetables, salads, fruits, fish and lean meat, and almost does not eat neither sugar nor simple carbohydrates nor heavy animal fats, and anyway he also suffers from stones, thick bile and dyskinesia of biliary tract. Why? Because he eats healthy and makes big breaks between meals. He skips breakfast, sometimes forgets to have a lunch, sometimes eats an apple instead of dinner, and unfortunately gets gallstones. We have three different behaviors, most likely three different kinds of body types in all these characters, three different diets, but the outcome is the same. The thick bile. You need two conditions for good bile outflow. The first is bile should be liquid enough so that it could be easily released by gallbladder. And the second condition is the contraction of the gallbladder and the actual release of bile. How to make bile less thick we will discuss in this video. And how to make the gallbladder release bile I will tell you in the next video so you know what you should do. It's better to subscribe to the channel. Bile is formed in the liver, goes to the gallbladder and concentrates there. Liver bile is very watery and has 10 times less bile acids and cholesterol. Gallbladder bile is thicker and more sticky. Some of the water from it goes back into the blood. This is actually the function of the gallbladder to create for you a major thicker and more active bile, like a, I don't know, good brandy, which also has to mature. So does the bile. Bile is an absolute must for fat digestion. Remember the ads of for dishwashing liquid in which a drop of the soap was dripped into a greasy plate and the fat ran to the edges. If you draw bile into the greasy plate, the effect will be exactly the same. Bile itself does not contain any enzymes and does not digest fat, but it breaks it down into small droplets so that the pancreatic enzymes can more easily deal with it. Without bile, the fat can't be digested at all. Undigested fat makes the stools fatty, light-colored, very smelly, unformed and frequent. Apart from that, Bile is the only way to remove cholesterol from the body. That's how it should go away with the bile flow. There is no other ways. The balance of cholesterol in the body is connected with the liver and bile. They are very important elements in both its production and its removal from the body. For example, statins, the most common drugs to reduce cholesterol in the, in the blood, affect the liver and it makes less cholesterol. There are several ways to make bile less thick and reduce the amount of cholesterol in it. Method number one, less calories if you overeat. 
The first method is to reduce the amount of cholesterol in the blood and its production in the liver. To make the liver stop producing cholesterol, you need to cut down the sugars, carbohydrates and calories from food. As I said, the liver makes cholesterol out of everything, of sugars, carbohydrates and even proteins. So overnutrition gives it a source to make cholesterol. Even if you eat perfectly healthy but overeat this healthy food, there is a chance that your cholesterol will be high. So it's important not just to eat healthier foods, but it's important not to overeat it. Since our goal is to reduce bile cholesterol, we need to reduce the amount of it in our food too. To do this, you should remove from your diet any meat byproducts, hamburgers, sausages, ready-made cutlets, and also a lot of eggs, seafood like shrimps, and choose lean meat. But you shouldn't avoid cholesterol at all, because if there is a crucial lack of this component, the liver will make it even more to compensate for it. Our bodies are used to saving resources, since we used to go hungry much more often than full for millions of years of our history. Cholesterol is a very useful molecule, from which we can make a lot of different stuff, hormones, useful substances, or built it into the membrane of cells. Our body is not ready to waste this valuable resource so easily, since it doesn't know when we will get it again. Cholesterol excreted with bile does not leave our body forever. 30% of it is reabsorbed in the intestines. Bile acids, another bile component, are also derivatives of cholesterol and are also one of the ways to get it out of the body. But the body saves them too, and 95% of them are absorbed too. These components come back to the liver and can ride on such a merry-go-round up to 20 times, so they are really reusable. Even if you change the diet right now, the bile, as well as the blood, will be very reluctant to part with cholesterol and the effect of changing of your diet will come not in a week, but most likely in a month or two. It is necessary to have patience. But there are a few tricks to help bile get rid of cholesterol faster. The thing is that uh, this fat-like molecule can easily pass straight into the bloodstream through the intestinal wall, if it has enough time to do so. Basically, the slower your bowel motility, the more often you have constipation, the more likely cholesterol will go back into the bloodstream and the liver, because it has enough time to be dissolved in the membranes of intestinal cells and go to the bloodstream. Even if you don't have a very serious problem with it, but your stools are less frequent and less regular, it makes sense to fix this problem in the name of blood cholesterol and more fluid bile. This method uh, will help with the problem of constipation too. Probably almost all people who have problems with biliary tract know about such a medicine like ursodeoxycholic acid. It has different brand names. Probably many people took them. This acid is actually bile acid, but our liver doesn't make it. It is able to reduce the level of cholesterol in the bile and even dissolves cholesterol gallstones. But for this effect, you need to take it for six months to a year. And of course, if you don't change your diet and lifestyle during this time, it won't dissolve any stones. It will just keep them from growing at best. But the special thing is that our body produces our own internal ursosan. It is made from our native bile acids by the lactobacillus, by our gut microbiome. If the microbiome is destroyed because you are frequently taking antibiotics, drinking alcohol, not moving much, and eating few vegetables, you are not getting any free internal self-made ursosan. The microbiome can be improved with 
probiotics and also you can fix it with aerobic exercises such as brisk walking. In studies such exercise changed the microbiome and increased the number of lactobacillus and bifidobacteria in it even without changing the diet. Of course, if you are prescribed also deoxycholic acid, you should continue to take it. So far as the microbiome makes just small doses of this component. But if you don't have stones yet and you want to support normal bile flow and your gallbladder function, it makes sense to improve your intestinal microbiome. The benefits will be very great. More cholesterol is formed in the liver if you are starving. The liver starts actively making it. If you consume enough food, it doesn't make it too much. So long periods of fasting can cause cholesterol increase. Irregular eating leads to thick bile, cholesterol stones and high blood cholesterol too. It is best to eat little by little uh, and with small breaks four or five times a day. This is much better for your cholesterol levels than starving all day long. Starvation diets or low caloric diets where you feel hungry all the time will also raise your blood and bile cholesterol levels. Losing weight for the beach season, I don't know, can also cause stones because cholesterol from fatty tissue has to go somewhere but it can only go into the bile. Fast weight loss may provoke gallstones and make the bile thicker. 70% of cholesterol from bile is excreted with stool, but 30% is taken back by our greedy organism. But you can cheat. Some substances prevent this reuptake of cholesterol, both from the food you ate and from the bile. These are phytosterols. You'll find them in vegetable oils like coconut oil, cottonseed oil, olive oil and even in a palm oil. I'm not going to tell you right now uh, that everyone should urgently eat only one of them. They have slightly different compositions, both uh, in terms of fatty acids and phytosterols. And one thing is clear, replacing some animal fats with vegetable oils and a variety of these vegetable oils in your diet can reduce cholesterol uptake. It is recommended to consume in total no more than 3 grams of phytosterols per day. Here does not work the principle drink a whole bottle of olive oil or a shot of oil every morning and you will dissolve your stones. No, you're gonna harm yourself that way. But adding a little bit to salads and other meals, this is a good approach. Soluble fiber also reduces the absorption of cholesterol into the blood, whereas gelling agents can slow down the transport of cholesterol from the intestines into the blood and make the bile less thick as a result. Try adding soluble fibers, pectin-based jellies, slimy vegetables and fruits to your diet, maybe jello or gelatin too. The main thing is not to add extra sugar along with them in large amount. Some fatty acids uh, in the diet change the composition of bile. Specifically, omega-free fatty acid in fish oil and fish reduce the amount of cholesterol in bile and reduce the more dense bile acids. I don't recommend uh, supplements, but replace red meat and certainly processed meats for fish and that really can work. And finally, the last very important way. As I have already said, cholesterol is a fat-like molecule. It easily passes into the walls of organs because it can penetrate directly through the cell membrane. This happens with the gallbladder. Cholesterol passes through the mucous membrane of the gallbladder, accumulates near the muscle fibers of this organ and makes them stiffer they contract much worse and the gallbladder is poorly emptied and cannot eject bile. From the wall of gallbladder, cholesterol does not go into the blood. It has nowhere to go. But if the amount of cholesterol in the bile decreases, passes from the wall 
back into the bile along the concentration gradient. So reducing cholesterol in your diet, in your bile, enough movement and a healthy microbiome helps your gallbladder to become elastic, active and young again, like it was 25 years ago. And it will contract normally again. And this is very important because if the bile is not flowing out for a long time, it becomes more thick. Cholesterol transforms into crystals and then to the stones. You should maintain normal bile outflow and gallbladder contraction to prevent it. How to do this? I will tell you in the following videos. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel. We can argue for a long time that diet will not change anything, that stones form because of genetics, the shape of the bile duct and other difficult to manage causes. But it is known that a high cholesterol diet in animal experiments forms stones in just three weeks. That's very fast. For humans, the equivalent of such a diet is the intake of 750 mg of cholesterol per day. And gaining that amount is not difficult at all. Let's say you eat per day 4-5 eggs. That's enough. Or 100 grams of cheese plus 100 grams of sausages plus 100 grams of cream or ice cream or something like that, and 200 grams of pork. In total, you will get more than 750 milligrams of cholesterol per day. And this is a recipe on how to get gallstones at home. You should consume no more than 300 milligrams of cholesterol per day. And lastly, it's necessary to remember that bile consists mainly of water. And if there is little water in your body, you are dehydrated, then there will be less water in bile too, and it will become more thick. Drink more water and bile will flow again. That's it for today. See you in the next videos.